Hey guys, here's just a reminder. Um, I do have other content other than wrestling. Um, this is my other channel, uh, as you can see. I I've tried so many different names for for uh, for, for this channel. Uh, start off as Green Party and Socials News, Green Party News, stuff of that nature. And that's why you see like Slack, uh, Slack Network presents and other things like that. Uh, now it's basically just I, I'm trying to ex explanation in regards to this basically is um, I feel I feel now Green Party uh, National Party is a is just as corrupt as the Democrats and Republicans. Uh, a lot more things are coming out in regards to Republicans that have been proven right, but I'm not a Republican and I'm not a Democrat. I am a socialist by policy, by, by socialist by policy, and it seems like majority of the socialist uh, political party parties uh, in the United States are in some way connected with the DNC in some way, and I don't want to be involved in that. So. The only thing I can suggest to you, if you're an, an independent or anybody else, just my own opinion, I'm going to be doing it myself. I don't, I'm not. I'm not saying you should, but I'm not going to vote. Um, I I've never donated to uh to any political party in the first place. I've never been. I've never been officially a part of any of any political party. Um, anyway, my point being is, if you don't want the parties the two party system to dictate what you who and what you vote for you either you either work to get open uh, open primaries in in your state uh and uh rank choice paper ballot uh uh voting or don't vote period because i'm sorry but the only time they come around Wanting to do what you want them to do is when they need your vote, and they've done this for forty plus years. So I'm not saying you shouldn't, but I'm saying that if you want to change, consider it. As far as the non-voting part and working on you know, open primaries and working on getting um, op uh, uh, ranked choice paper ballots, because there's a difference between paper ballots and machine ballot and, and machine voting. Machine voting can be easily hacked, supposedly hacked. And easily manipulated, whereas in paper ballots, there's a paper trail. So, anyway, that's why I do. That's why I got to say, as far as that part goes, otherwise, this, I'm trying to turn this channel into uh, talking monetary theory. So that's why you see majority of the stuff on here is about MMT. Um, anyway, so uh, please give give the, give this channel a try. If you like the content on there that I continuously put up there, then subscribe. Uh, if you want to donate, you can go you can go to paypal.me slash uh, capital leftist, capital GAP network, and uh, donate what you want as far as that part goes, or go to this website, uh, check out my content, uh, all into this content, um, and subscribe, share, like, and yeah. Anyway. Right back. Hey, welcome to Monday's show. This is uh, March, March, uh, April fourth. Yeah, April fourth. There we go. Uh, January, March, April. <laughs> anyway, see, so, yeah, April fourth. Uh, I wanted to kind of do something that I hadn't done yet. And that is basically this is from as you can see the uh, real progressives. Uh, if not here, right now, you know, real, real progressives. Uh, a quality. Um, if you, I mean, if you're not uh, up to, if you're not following Warren Mosler, uh, Stephanie Kelton, uh, if you're not following Mike Norman, or the next best thing, uh, and a prominent. Uh, a knowledgeable website and organization to learn modern monetary theory from it would be real progressives. Uh, they interview countless uh, uh, experts in, in uh, modern monetary theory, ask all kinds of questions. Uh, 
make anybody who is watching or listening to them more knowledgeable, uh, make them think and make them learn a lot about uh, modern monetary theory. Um, Mike Norman, uh, he, he pretty much helps you, um, it, I think it's about Pitbull Economics. Uh, he basically helps you uh, learn how to trade uh, uh, using MMT as a lens to, to look at trading on everyday, on, on everyday uh, Wall Street and stuff of that nature. So, uh, you know, uh, check him out. Uh, none of which I'm, I'm getting endorsed by or anybody else like that. It, it's, MMT is a, is a quality um, lens to look through uh, as far as economics goes. If you look at what um, happened during the financial crisis, a lot of people that saw this coming either knew functional finance, uh, also uh, can, can see the writing on the wall, uh, MMTers, uh, quite a few of them actually uh, uh, got that right as early as 2001. Um, anyway, look all that up. Uh, but anyway, this is from the man himself, uh, Warren Mosler. And since I actually haven't uh, been able to get get the thought across to do like a small little video and put on my YouTube channel, um, I thought I would just go from here as as I'm real progresses as, as, you know, as you can see. But anyways, to see, uh, this is a more complex definition from a prominent MMT or uh, MMT economist. A more complex definition doesn't make the prior definition wrong. So let's see. And this, if you look at what ha was happening in Russia and what other, uh, what the IMF is about, uh, all of this will make sense if, if that if you're not already knowledge, uh, knowledgeable of of uh, the economy. If you if you're already not an economist or whatever else, you know that sort of thing. Uh, first uh, is uh, a sovereign country uh, it has the ability to issue its own currency exclusively. Uh, requires all taxes and related obligations to be uh, extinguished in that currency. Uh, can purchase anything that is for sale in that currency at any time and chooses without financial constraints. That includes all idle labor. Uh, its central bank sets the uh, the interest rates. The current uh, the currency floats. The uh, government does not borrow in any currency other than its own. This appears solid, but in fact is too wrong. Uh, another wrong, de de uh, another wrong definition. Uh, the big hole in this, and this is coming from the guy who actually, you know, brought it forward. Um, uh, a hole. In, okay, so is the external borrowing constraints item six in the list? If a government generally could purchase everything the currency needed in its own uh, wait, uh, country, excuse me, needed in its own currency, then it would indeed be monetarily sovereign. Now, uh, obviously, reading from this, and now we see the author's definition of MS or monetary sovereignty, claiming this is the right definition, extending the obscurity, absurd, absurdity. There we go. But no country is self-sufficient. All countries need imports. So item three on the list is a real uh, herring. Uh, let's see, uh, elements of the definition are red, uh, elements of a definition are red herrings. A government may be able to buy anything that is for sale in its own currency, but that doesn't uh, include oil or gas or uh, raw materials for industrial production or, base, or basic foodstuffs. Uh, to buy the to buy those you need U.S. dollars indeed. These days you are you I assume that's the consumer need dollars for, more, for most imports. Uh, now most consumers buy imports with their local currencies. Currency exchange is generally done by the local importer uh, or the foreign exporter. Uh, most of global trade is conducted in U.S. dollars. Yes, that's often a uh, numerator or a numerator. The, the only country in the world that can't always buy everything the country needs is its own in its own currency and therefore uh, never needs to borrow in another currency is the United States because it, it is the sole issuer of the U.S. dollar. 
this is another way of expressing what is known as uh, it, its exorbitant privilege. This definition demonstrates ignorance of the numera, uh, numerator concept and, need, and needs like those uh, there is a failure to the to distinguish between the currency of denomination and the currency of denomination uh, of uh, accumulated net financial assets. However, the dark side of this is that the U.S. is obliged to run wide uh, current account and fiscal deficits. That would be the bright side. Imports are rare, uh, are real benefits and exports are real cost. And the net is known as real terms of trade. Because global demand for the dollar for uh, far exceeds U.S. production, yes, a policy designed to support net exports at the real cost of the microeconomic, or economy, excuse me. When it attempts to close these deficits, trade deficits, global trade uh, and investments shrinks causing market crashes and triggering recessions around the world. Sometimes there is even a recession in the U.S. itself. The U.S. last attempt to run a fiscal surplus ended in a 2001 market crash and recessions. Recession, excuse me. Um, as written, the author is presuming uh, the U.S. proactively targeted fiscal surpluses to reduce their deficits. And I should probably go back here and clarify that uh, he's actually responding to uh, Francis Coppola. There we go. <laughs> I knew I missed something there. But anyway, let's see. Da -da -da. Let's see. Okay. Okay. There we go. There. Let's see. Global trade and investment shrinks, causing market crashes and triggering recessions around the world. Sometimes there is even a recession in the United States. Okay. I've already read that part. Uh, so as written, the author is presuming the U.S. proactively targeted fiscal surpluses to reduce trade uh, trade deficits. This was not uh, the reason for the surpluses. Those were generated by tax structure along with rapidly increasing private sector deficits due to the tech, Y2K, and real estate man uh, manias. MMT uh, adherents uh, like to cite this as evidence of the eliminating the government deficit as or in, in, in any country will re result in recession. This is stretching things uh, considerably. But this is stretching things uh, considerably. Fred shows uh, us that even in the U uh, damn. U.S. only... Uh, U.S. only one recession in the last century has been preceded by a government surplus. Again, a gross error of logic, uh, saying that eliminating a, uh, a government deficit can result in a recession is not to say that all recessions are caused by a government surplus. Now I'm guessing that obviously these are the the statements from uh, from from a author from an author of a of an article that Warren Moser is uh, replying to, um, and the in bulk I'm guessing these are, those are his answers. Um, again, a gross error of logic saying the eliminating eliminating a government deficit can result in recession is not to say that all recessions are caused by a government surplus. Of course, uh, of course, many developed countries do in practice pay for imports in their own currencies. Governments, banks, and corporations meet dollar funding uh, need, uh, meet dollar funding requirements by borrowing in their own currency and swapping into dollars in a financial market. This diminishes the need for dollar denominated borrowing either by government or the private sector. These countries, therefore, have a considerable degree of monetary sovereignty. Uh, I guess this is uh, his, um, the Warren Moses uh, answer. This is just a further expansion of the author's definition of uh, monetary sovereignty. But it is not uh, absolute as it, uh, as it is in the United States. It crucially uh, depends on the stability of their currency and the uh, creditworthiness other borrowers, both of which are a matter of market confidence. 
I guess this is where uh, Warren actually uh, answers, I believe. No point in continuing as the rest is continue, uh, continue to cont uh, attempt to proceed in logical progression with the um, with the same compounding breakdowns of logic. MMT is about pure force of logic as per soft currency economics, which this author, Coppola, uh, is apparently unwilling to or incapable of recognizing. Um, okay, feel free to distribute. So let's go back to the main thing here. Um, now, this is the part that I'm, I've been learning as far as the part goes and trying to understand as far as the overall economy, how money works, and where it comes from, and all of those stuff. Uh, to get back to the basics here, um, one issue, uh, issue, uh, issue its own currency exclusively, which means we. We, uh, UK, Canada, Japan, uh, China, I think also, uh, we create our own currency. We're not, we're not dependent on other countries uh, exclusively for our currency and all that stuff. And I don't think it's uh, actually uh, pegged to anything in regards to other countries' um, denomination or monetary denominations. Uh, requires all taxes and, and related obligations to be ex, uh, extinguished uh, in that currency. This is where we saw Russia. Russia has decided. Uh, Russia decided to have like all of the countries that are un unfriendly uh, to um, to open up ruble uh, uh, card uh, bank accounts, so that when they want to purchase oil, gas, whatever. And they would be paying in ruble, so that that's a whole that's a whole reason why they're able to sustain uh, that part of the war. Uh, at least that's from what I've seen, and that's what it looks like. Anyway, um, there aren't. I said from the very I said from the very beginning. Once I realized that J.P. Morgan Chase was actually uh, was actually processing um, their uh, debt payments uh, in U.S. dollars. Once they were, once I realized that they were able to do that, I knew they'd be fine because not a lot of their debt is actually in, in U.S. dollar. So a lot of their debt is actually in rubles, which we're able to pay. Anyway, so let's see. Uh, can purchase anything that is for sale in that currency at any time it chooses without financial constraints. That includes all idle labor. Uh, four, its central bank sets the interest rate. That's true. I mean, that's what the Fed does. Um, and the Fed is our, is our central bank. Um, the currency flows. In other words, when selling the currency in exchange for other currency, uh, there's a, a the the rate of the the cost of transferring or exchanging that currency is floating. It all depends on what I I guess what the uh, what the market says as far as the value of of that currency. Um, like you know, how much is how much is the trading for that sort of thing? Let's see. And the government does not borrow in any currency other than its own. Uh, yes. Do we, do we borrow as a country? Uh, yeah, but we don't borrow any other currency. We borrow from our own banking system, central bank, and that's one of the reasons why there's been that's why uh, QE's been doing uh, been going. Um, now at first. As far as uh, quantitative easing, I was thinking that, that that they were able to, uh, like give reserves to banks to make sure that things don't collapse. But that that sounds like it's one of the ways. But another way is when they purchase assets, you know, like uh, markets back security and all other stuff, and they're able to buy those from banks and put money back and put money in the system and then every 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 purchase them uh which is repose uh repurchase them to take the money out so which means that they buy the assets then the banks rebuy the assets bring them back bring them back that for loans and stuff like that um well, they have currency on hand for the loans for it to be able to be put in inside the bank. Um, anyway, uh, if you like what you hear, please uh, uh, subscribe. Um, this will also be on my Substack, CalvinTaylor.substack.com. I just wanted to read a little bit of this part right here. Um, Anyways, I will be right back.
Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, welcome to uh, Jess Calvin uh, learning MMT through a clouded lens. Uh, I say that because I'm still learning it, uh, but at the same time, kind of like one of those um, on the job training sort of things I'm doing. Anyway, so one of the things I uh, am inspiring to, uh, is what, what, one of the things I'm trying to do is come up with a thing where it's how many people who are who are in touch with the with the mmt way of doing the economics um how many of them uh write about the about the, the financial crisis because mainstream media was quite literally saying that nobody saw this coming i can comfortably say that the people who actually knew this was coming was people who to uh subscribe to the MMT way of thinking. And this person right here, uh, Steve Keen, I believe, uh, I follow him on uh, on Twitter, I suggest you the same. Is this Steve Keen? Let me just kind of make sure. Yeah, Steve Keen. Uh, apparently he is the head of the School of Economics, History and Politics in Kingston University. Now, what I would want to do is find out how many mainstream economists um, knew beforehand, you know, like say three or four years prior uh, to the 2008 uh, economic crisis uh, and compare it to how many people who subscribe to, to the MMT way of thinking and, see, and just kind of compare how many people knew and what the details they knew of it. If they knew everything about it, and they knew uh, maybe not when it was going to happen, but the fact that it was going to happen, you know, because of this or that, or the, these other things, because I think that's more important uh, in showing um, why I personally think that uh, modern monetary theory is the economic way of looking at how the financial system works. Um, Anyway, so that's that's my side project I'm trying to do, and this is one of the people that I'm uh, I am uh, studying. And this, in fact, is actually uh, is I predicted the last financial crisis. Now, soaring global debt levels oppose risk of another. Now, what they mean, what he means by that, and by this, obviously in 2017. So uh, it was almost a decade after. Uh, or no, it was a decade after uh, the first financial crisis. Anyway, uh, basically, uh, the phrase may have religious roots there, but there is no better way to describe the dominant sector and sect in economics today than as willfully blind. A decade after the 2007-2008 crisis, most still repeat the mantra that it could not have been predicted. Nonsense. The data that showed what would cause the crisis and arguments uh, by non mainstream economists that one w would occur uh, were av available before it hit. There was a runway bubble in, oh, sorry, not runway, runaway bubble in asset markets caused by too much credit being created by. Banks. Oh, by the way, I, uh, credit for me being able to read this goes to uh, uh, Stu Grunbine from the uh, from uh, the, uh, the Real Progressives. Um, uh, I hope to one day uh, be able to work with them uh, more often than not. But anyways, no credit goes to him uh, as far as pointing me to this direction. Anyway, let's see. Da -da -da. There was a runaway uh, bubble in asset market caused by too much credit being created by banks. Credit uh, your capacity to buy your capacity to buy something with money borrowed from a bank rather than from your own cash is exactly equal to the increase in private debt every year. The bigger the bigger this is compared to a country's GDP or economic output, the more the econo the economy is dependent on credit. And the bigger the accumulated debt is when compared to GDP, the more likely it is that a reduction, a reduction in credit will cause an econ economic crisis. Uh, the data is uh, incontrovertible, <laughs> incontrovertible, I guess. Uh, the data, if you look at 
is uh, especially if you consider the epic center of the 2008 crisis, the U.S. in historic context. The Great Depression, triggered by the crash of 20, uh, 1929, was preceded by a margin uh, by a margin debt fueled a bubble on the U.S. stock market, with private debt blowing out during uh, the crisis and then collapsing. That's exactly what happened in 2007, 2008, only with mortgage debt also getting in on the act. And let's see. Private debt affects the economy in two ways. The higher debt is relative to GDP, the more that a change in credit impacts on total demand. A credit adds to total demand by allowing people to spend more than, they, than just the money they currently have. The correlation between credit and employment in the U.S. is staggering. This is not just because it is so big. The correlation co coefficient is a 0 0.8 on a scale of 0, 1, oh, no, sorry, minus 1 to plus 1. But because according to mainstream economists such as Ben Bernanke, the correlation should be close to zero. Uh, but there's a couple of charts up, uh, uh, up here uh, comparing uh, credit to unemployment. Um, uh, let's see, the unemployment or the employment uh, was uh, up to 78, or I'm not going to try to read that. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand that yet. Anyway, so let's see, Bernanke, who got the job as head of the U.S. Central Bank because he was supposed to be the expert on what caused the Great Depression and didn't even consider similar data that was available at the time, nor 1930s economist Irvin Fisher's thesis, which pointed the finger at the bursting of asset bubbles, Bernanke believed that credit should have no significant macroeconomic effects. Should, but it does. Uh, it does. Um, anyway, um, empirically, this is a manifestly untrue, but economists turned a blind eye to the data because it didn't suit their preferred model of how banks operate. They, they're, they model banks as if they are uh, intermediaries that introduce savers to borrowers, not as originators of both money and debt. Yeah, the second one actually is accurate. Uh, this deliberate blindness was, in a sense, uh, excusable before the crisis. But it's unforgivable after it, especially since central banks are actually coming out now and saying that this loanable funds model is a myth. Central banks have therefore learned uh, something from the crisis, but academic economists are in the main uh, trying to go backwards to those defense that the that this crisis could not have been predicted. Uh, see, in fact, it was predicted by economists who take banks, debt, and money seriously, such as Anne. Petifor, which I'll be uh, I'll, I'll be explaining her next. Uh, uh, Wynn Godley, uh, also someone I'll be exploring, and him, Steve Keen. Uh, using the same analysis today, I don't expect a crisis in the U.S. and U.K. in the near future. Again, it's 2017. Uh, it I do expect stagnation like that which Japan has experienced since its asset bubble economy burst back in the 1990s. There will be revivals and reversals, but not an outright crisis because a prerequisite for that is very high levels of credit. While the overhand of private debt from the last crisis persists, credit-based demand will be uh, anemic compared to pre-crisis levels. Instead, prices are likely in countries which a sidestep a trouble in 2007 by continuing their private debt bubbles. The pre 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 preeminent there we go, candidate uh, for China whose credit bubble is easily the fastest growing in their in the history of capitalism, uh, it will have the company of South Korea, Canada, Australia, Belgium, and a number of others. 
Uh, for those, for so there won't be another collapse like Northern Rock in the UK or Washington Mutual in the US. But mainstream economists need to quit sticking their hands in the sand, uh, heads in the sand. Excuse me, hands on the uh, heads in the sand over the relationship between private debt bubbles. The future offers some hope that this is beginning to change. Some preeminent, uh, pro, prominent, excuse me, mainstream. Uh, economists are now doing some serious novel gazing, naval gazing at their models. People such as ex president of the Minneapolis uh, Federal Reserve, uh, Ne Ayana uh, Kachilakata, I'm not even sure how to pronounce it. I apologize if I murdered it anyway, and chief economist of, at the World Bank, Paul Romer. Uh, both, uh, but mo more likely, uh, but more likely, change will come from central banks and the new generation of e economics, such as the students who established the rethinking economy movement to address the real issue the world faces. Let's see. Hey, uh, anyway, uh, so getting back to what I was doing. Um, another uh, story I wanted to get to was uh, U.S. cracks down on Russian debt payments and latest sovereign payment law halted. The United States stopped the Russian government on Monday from paying holders of its sovereign debt more than $600 million from over reserves held at American banks in a move meant to ratchet up pressure on Moscow and eat into its holdings of U.S. dollars. Under sanctions put in place after Russia invaded Ukraine on February 24th, foreign currency reserves uh, held by the Russian Central Bank of US uh, at U U.S. financial institutions were frozen. But the department, uh, but the Treasury Department had been allowing the Russian government to use those funds to make coupon payments on dollar-denominated sovereign debt on a case-by-case -case basis. On Monday. Uh, as, as the largest uh, of the payments came due, including a $552.4 and and $552 million uh, principal payment on maturing bond, the U.S. government decided to cut off Moscow's access to the frozen funds, according to U.S. Treasury spokesperson. Uh, oops. Uh, uh, and, okay, uh, Treasury spokesperson. An 84 million coupon payment was also due on Monday on a, on a 2042 sovereign dollar bond. The move was meant to force Moscow to, pay, to make the difficult decision of whether it would use dollars that it has access to for payments or its debt or for the on its debt or for the purposes, including supporting its war effort, spoke, uh, the spokesperson said. Russia faces a historic default if it chooses to not do so. Russia must choose between draining remaining uh, valuable dollar reserves or new uh, or new revenue come in or default, the spokesperson said. The J.P. Morgan Chase and Company, which had been processing payments as a correspondent bank so far, was stopped by the Treasury, a source familiar with the matter said. The correspondent bank for processes the, uh, the coupon payments from Russia, sending them to the payment agent to distribute to uh, to oversee bond bondholders. The country has a 30-day grace period to make a payment, the source says. The default worries. The increase of pressure comes as the United States and Europe are planning new sanctions this week to punish Moscow over civilian killings in Ukraine. Russia calls it calls its move in, in Ukraine a special military operation in Ukraine in the West said the invasion was illegal and unjustified, searing images of mass grave and the and the bound bodies of people shot at close range drew an international outcry on Monday. Russia, which has a total of 15 international bonds outstanding with a face value of around 40 billion, has managed to avoid defaulting on its international debt so far despite unprecedented Western sanctions, but the task is getting harder. Russia w was at last allowed to make a 447 million coupon payment uh, at a 2030, on a 2030 sovereign dollar bond due last Thursday, at least, a 50, or, uh, at least the fifth such payment since the war began. If Russia fails to make any of its upcoming bond payments within their predefined timeframes, uh, pay, uh, pays the rubles 
where dollars, euros, or other currency is specified, it will constitute a default. While Russia is not able to access international borrowing markets due to the West sanctions, a default would prohibit it from accessing those markets until creditors are fully repaid and any legal uh, cases stemming from the default are settled. Now, I'm thinking to myself here, like, okay, well, let's see. A lot of what they sell uh, doesn't actually go to us in the first place. It goes to other countries. It's a sovereign nation or sovereign currency nation, meaning it can create its own money to satisfy its own obligations that are in their own currency. Uh, obviously, as you can see, as you can see in here, uh, is based on U.S. denominated uh, bonds. Oh, I mean, uh, see, it's not as if they don't have the money. They have the money is frozen. Um, so it would be a it would be a default based on international sanctions not default based on policy it itself cannot handle so if anything i would probably guess that after everything is said and done where proof is out there comes to light uh i don't see the u.s looking looking very good in this case uh because they are forcing a sovereign country uh to default on on debt that it has the money to pay. Uh, it has the reserves to pay. Um, and given the fact that, now I don't know much about what's going on in regards to the war itself. I'm looking at it from the, from the uh, financial side of things. Uh, at least I'm trying to, uh, and I'm not trying to look at it from a emotional standpoint as far as uh, a body count or uh, who has or hasn't been killed by whom or what. Um, I will say that uh, Ukraine, um, not exactly the best history as far as not having um, neo-Nazi types uh, in their army. Uh, I believe a couple of them actually uh, do hold federal office in, UK, in Ukraine. Uh, I also hear that the current president, I forget what his name is, Zelensky, I think his name, his name is, uh, suspended uh, all other left type parties. Um, and I apologize for any noise. I mean, uh, it's hot in here and it's rainy outside. So, and uh, some others, I live in low income housing, excuse me. Anyway, a bit of a personal there. Um, anyway, so uh, yeah, it, it, the US is gonna look, look really bad either way in this case, uh, in the end. And this is the first time we've actually gone to quote unquote war with a not with another sovereign country, okay, because usually if we go to war with a sovereign country, or not a sovereign country, but with a country, um, they their their dollar, their money is paid to ours in some way, um, and so they basically like rope a dope them, you know, like until they run out of energy and say fuck it, we're done, and that sort of thing. Anyway. I, this is forcing one country's hand over another financially. I don't think it's going to work either way uh, because obviously once the whole thing is settled, Russia can immediately go back to be able to pay those debts. Um, if anything, uh, the interest might go up slightly, but that's pretty much it. I don't see anything really coming out of it except for the U.S., retaining his bad reputation internationally and given the fact that uh, China is Russia's uh, biggest uh, trading partner uh, we're like fifth uh, and China is also our biggest trading partner so they're they're stuck in the middle but they also get a lot of money from both from both sides so is this is going to be um, interesting to see what happens in, in, the, in the long run um Anyways, that's pretty much what I've got for today. Uh, this will be on my Substack and also my YouTube channel. And the video will be on, well, this this video will, uh, will be on, on the YouTube channel and uh, the audio version will be on my Substack. So uh, if you like, the the one on my YouTube channel will have all the King Kaboodle to the theme song and everything else. Uh, the audio won't because, well, I, maybe I should actually. I don't know, I'm still kind of deciding on that. Um, 
anyways uh thanks for listening and watching uh subscribe to this channel um go to real progressives uh look them up uh they have a ton of great content um again i'm hoping to in the future work with them uh, whether it be uh contribution in regards to material or some who knows uh but anyway thanks for listening either way watching subscribe uh yeah uh, subscribe uh share like comment yeah thanks uh for listening peace out for now hey how's it going there uh just wanted to update you guys um this is i'm i'm bringing this back as far as uh if you want any part of any merchandise that, I, that I've had in the past or not, uh, don't, don't forget you can go up to you can go up here and order any of this. It's all premium as far as uh, quality. I have a I have a I had a mask somewhere around here, but I I, I still have the uh, I still have the uh, the. That was it. Um, sweatshirt, or a sweat jacket. One of these. This is. I still have one of these. Um. Anyway, so yeah. Um, check it out if you want. Uh, I have uh, pillows apparently. And this is the pillows. Yeah, I've got pillows. Uh, three, four different colors. Um, check that out. Uh, and uh, coming up next will be the my uh my main show. Uh, stay tuned. Peace out.